Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty I YouTube channel and it is time for a new sheet load of cards and it's a special edition. I hope you'll stick around, find out more about it and how you can download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I think this April 2021 edition might be one of my favorites ever. And not just because April is my birthday month. I am in love with this special edition and I hope that you will be too. Here in just a minute, I'll share with you a look at the latest sheet load. We'll talk about what makes it special. I'll show you the first set I made and then I'll let you know how you can download the file for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Don't forget that tomorrow I will be back with the process video of this first set and my team of collaborators will be sharing a look at their cards on their YouTube channels, Instagram accounts, and blogs. Now you can go ahead and get a jump start by going ahead and subscribing to all those sites. Everybody's links are in the description box below. Are you ready to see this month's sheet load? The April 2021 sheet load of cards is a special mini slimline edition. I have had lots of fun lately creating these little works of art and even sending some off. I decided to make my final card three and a quarter by six and a quarter when it was folded because I found these envelopes at the Dollar Tree. This is a size that is easily available to find in many stores, anything that sells envelopes usually, and they were slightly larger than three and a half by six and a half. So to allow some room for depth on the card, I did go a little bit smaller than that when creating my layout. Now these envelopes I got at the Dollar Tree, so I think 80 envelopes for a dollar is an excellent deal. Now unfortunately they are not the prettiest envelopes, but for me this is just a carrier to get them to the final destination. The ones that I found do have that security stuff inside, which I don't care for. But recently, I think it was Biddy Penny, in her Dollar Tree, she found this size envelope that was not security. So maybe check around and see what you can find. For April, using two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and 10 pieces of cardstock, you're going to yield 10 of these mini slimline cards. I tried to keep the layout itself just very basic and you can jazz this up however you want. I have a suggestion to put a sentiment on this piece, but you could always do a smaller sentiment and maybe add an image stamp or add a die cut or something there to, again, jazz it up, make it your own. I know that 10 pieces of cardstock sounds like quite a bit, but you do get 10 cards and all of the mats and the sentiment piece will come from that piece of cardstock. I do usually like to stick with A2 cards because I can get two card bases from each sheet of cardstock. So I did try to make the most of each piece of cardstock and you'll see that here in just a little bit. As always, the PDF is a two page file. On the first page, you get the sketch and the supply list. And on the second page, I give you all of the cutting guides. Also, while I'm pointing things out, don't forget that at the top, I have a couple hashtags. If you do share your creations online, I would love for you to use those. The sketch is to size, so if you ever want to figure out, well, will my sentiment work there? Will my image work there? You can just bring your clear set or your stamp to that and just see if what you want to put on there is going to fit. I did already mention the supplies you will need, and that will yield 10 cards. Now, if you like this layout, but you don't need 10 mini slimline cards, I always give the dimensions of a single card. At the bottom, I do have a few suggestions on alternatives or ways to make it your own. As always, you can rotate it, you can flip it, you can add layers, you can add foam tape, change the size of the sentiment block, whatever you want to do and that will fit your supplies and your needs. 
On the second page, it is the cutting guides, and I show you how to cut both of your pieces of pattern paper. And then down here in the bottom right, I show you how to cut all 10 of your card stocks. And you will notice that we have the card base, we have the mat for the pattern paper strip, and here at the bottom, we have the sentiment piece. Now in my instructions, I do call for that piece to be cut off at an angle. You'll see here it's kind of angled on the left, but you don't have to do that. Or you could round those corners, whatever you want to do. Before I show you my first set, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about the supplies that I use for my cards. For my first set of April cards, I use the Just Miss You clear stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. I got this in one of their recent card kits and I just love the sentiments in it. I think a lot of them are just good for sending out cards for any occasion or just to let somebody know that you're thinking of them. The papers I chose, which you'll see in depth here more in a little bit, go well with gold accents. So for my little embellishments, I got out Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots in clear slash gold. What that means is the center is clear with glitter in it, and then there's a gold frame around each one. I love these because they are a great deal. You get lots and they're pretty economical in price. And another thing is they are very flat, so they're good when you have to mail a card. For my sentiment, I use Versamark ink along with some detail gold embossing powder. Once again, just bringing in the gold accents from the glitter dots. For my card base and my mats and my sentiment, I chose an off-white card stock and I just got out 10 sheets of that. This went well, you'll see here with my pattern papers. And here's a look at the two pattern papers that I chose for today's cards. I recently got these at my local scrapbook store, which is Busy Scrapping here in Omaha, and it is from Crate Paper called Open Book. Unfortunately, this is discontinued, but you might want to check your local store and see if they happen to still have some. I bought it a couple months ago, and I used it up and loved the cards, and I had to run right back and get more. This is actually the opposite sides of the same paper. That makes it very easy for me to pair these two together. I do usually try to go with a one big bold print and then smaller prints and coordinating colors for any additional pattern papers that I need. Are you ready to see that first set? So there was a look at the first set of cards I made. You might have noticed some slight differences between the cards as I shared them with you. Sometimes I would have different sized gems on the sentiment piece. And you might notice here too between these two, this vertical strip here, sometimes I would move it a little bit further to the left so that I would have a little overhang of the sentiment strip to the right of that. Another thing that happened when I was placing my vertical strips, my pattern paper onto my mat, apparently one of my text pieces got flipped around to the rose side. So instead of tearing that apart and getting rid of the card, I just use it as is and I think it ended up looking pretty nice. One other thing I did was on this one, instead of adding three little embellishments, I did five tiny ones in a row. If you're gonna do embellishments, it's a good idea to do those in odd numbers that is more pleasing to the eye. Tomorrow, don't forget that I will be back to show you exactly how I made these and give you some tips along the way. Now I'll let you know how to download the printable for free as long as you're a subscriber to my channel. Now, being a subscriber, we do go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me and sign up for a mailing list or verify in any way that you are a subscriber. If you're going to click on the download link, please make sure that you have already clicked on that subscribe button as well. 
This month is a little bit different. About halfway down in the description box below, I have the link to the April 2021 file. Now below it, it does say to watch the video for the password, but good news, you don't need a password. Your password is watching the video to find out how to download this. Once you click on the link, it will pull up a PDF file. You can view it on screen and use it that way, or you can print it off. Now I do usually print mine in color, but you can print these in black and white as well if that's all you have access to. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I hope to see you back tomorrow. And until then, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.